Thank you, Sandy. Uh, my introductions are somewhat abbreviated, but you can read more on all of our presenters because they're just so qualified. I, I won't take up all your time trying to introduce everyone properly, but the publication you got when, we re when you registered here, you could read more about any of our presenters. Our next presenter, Dan Simmons, another friend of mine. Dan Simmons is director of the Natural Resources Task Force at the American Legislative Council, ALEC. Simmons has also worked for the Competitive Enterprise Institute, specializing in urban sprawl, property rights, and public land issues. It's a pleasure to bring Dan Simmons up before you for his presentation. Thanks, John. Three years ago, Sandy hired me to come to work for Alec, and to what one of the things that I did was I started doing the same the, the tracking that she was that she was just tra um, talking about, as in the ta the tracking of greenhouse gas legislation in the states. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth on uh, talking about the thing the things that, that Sandy started when she was out at Alec, um, and some of the there'll be some overlap with some of the things that that she said and. This, can, this summarizes what has happened in the last two years with greenhouse gas legislation in the, in the states. There's been an absolutely massive increase. That's and slide. there is, uh, th this slide really, this, this shows it all. I don't go as far back as Sandy talked about in 1999. I started in 2003. Uh, but it, it, it shows you that greenhouse gas legislation was relatively constant, maybe there was, a, there, was a, there was a slight amount of decrease in the states, and then the election of 2006 happened. And mm -hmm. as a result of that, we saw, it, I mean, it, it went from 68 to 372 uh, uh, bills in the states that would either regulate greenhouse gases or would tend to regulate, would lead towards the regulation of greenhouse gases, 84 of which of those passed last year. Um, this year we've seen 302 as of last week. Um, then again, state legislative sessions are still pretty are still pretty young, so that number could reach uh, last year's level as well. So the reasons the reasons for this are are many. Um, there was Iraq. There was the uh, the the the, na the nationwide uh, uh, what, what's the right word kind of displeasure with the Bush administration uh, that led to the the, the changeover in uh, in in uh, in state uh, legislate in state legislatures. We've had a whole bunch of propaganda, um, and then what we have here is uh, is a whole bunch of uh, <coughs> certain people flexing and trying to demonstrate their 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 their, their strength on the issue, um, and of course we have people like uh, you know Governor Schwarzenegger out there trying to trying to make a point about. Um, climate change and, and uh, increase his uh, environmental bona fides. So let's talk about the, the trends in these issues that we see at the states. The first is, as, as Sandy, uh, one of the things that she mentioned, mini Kyoto protocols. In other words, these are greenhouse gas caps. Um, and we start, of course, with California. Uh, some people call this, you know, these are states that are, quote, unquote, taking the lead on global warming. There was California's Global Warming Solutions Act of 2006. We've also seen them, wow, that slide went a little bit weird on me. Hawaii, New Jersey, Oregon, Maine, Minnesota, Washington. I'm assuming that that's just a problem with this new version of uh, Outlook. That's, that's gonna be my argument. And then, <laughs> and then we've seen a couple of, uh, of um, executive orders, Florida and Illinois. That, that try to cap um, emissions. What are going to be the actual uh, outcome of executive orders that try to cap emissions? That's, you know, you're only controlling the entire energy economy, which is only controlling the entire economy of, of the state, and certain legislators, um, certain governors think they can do it merely by executive order. Doubtful. So let's, here's the, here's California's Global Warming Solutions Act. What it does is it reduces greenhouse gas emissions to 1990 levels by 2020. Well, it actually doesn't do that. What it says is this is what we're going to do. Because taking the lead does not mean actually coming up with a set of, of, of methods. It doesn't actually require that you specify how you're going to do this. It merely is setting the goal, and goals are sufficient, that everything else is magic. Um, then an 80% reduction by 2050, and this is going to start in 2012. Now, Mr. Schwarzenegger, because he likes to be out there on the, on the beach flexing and strutting around, 
what he didn't do is come up with those regulations, as I mentioned, instead of what he and the state legislature did, is punted to the California Air, Resource, uh, California Air Resources Board, CARB, to come up with all of the regulations. Who knows what they're going to be? We don't know. They're working very diligently, I know, to, to come up with whatever regulations they think are going to work. But the point is, is that all of these plans so far, we don't really know what the plans are. We know that they come up with a cap, but the, 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 you know, the real question is, how are they going to, to achieve this? And we don't know that yet. So this is a, this is a map from the Pew, what is it, the, the Pew Center for Climate Change. Um, so I apologize. These guys have millions of dollars. I don't know why this isn't prettier for you. Um, I, of course, have a limited budget and limited time, and I, you know, I'm not a uh, Photoshop master. But the point here is these are all states that have some type of greenhouse gas emission targets. Um, you notice up in the, north, uh, the Northeast, those are all states that are members of, uh, of the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, and we see others. And notice, you know, it's uh, ten per, you, you know, it started out with 1990 levels by 2020, like California, and then you have other states that try to one-up California, like Oregon, that says, oh yeah, you think, you think you're green? We're gonna go 10% be, uh, below 1990 levels by 2020. Again, actual how you're going to achieve the, actually how you're going to achieve this is, you know, not known. Here are some places where we saw stationary emissions bills in, in 2007. The dark green is um, legislation that actually passed. Now, not all of these, like North Carolina's bill is not necessarily too onerous, but I just want to talk about the bill that was in, uh, the bills that were in Washington and, and Montana. And what those bills did is what, as opposed to capping emissions, what these bills do is they cap emissions from coal-fired power plants. They don't ban new coal-fired power plants, but they ban new coal-fired fired power plants if they emit more than a, a certain amount of carbon dioxide per, you know, per, per, um, per kilowatt hour. And that level is set at, at, uh, at a level that is only achievable if you either sequester carbon or if you use natural gas. As in, there's, there's no way to achieve that level with current, with current technology. So in effect, they have banned new coal-fired power plants in Montana and Washington. Washington isn't necessarily a problem. They have a lot of hydroelectric power. Montana could be a different, a different story. The second trend is uh, the state regulation of greenhouse gas um, emissions from automobiles. And there's two ways to go about this. The first way is to go after uh, automobiles and to, make, uh, to force automobiles to be more uh, energy efficient. California's plan was to uh, to mandate that all carbon dioxide emissions from um, automobiles decrease by 30 percent by 2016. The problem with, and here are other states that say, oh yeah, California's doing it, it has to be good. Um, these are states that are, as it says, poised to follow. They won't necessarily follow California, but the problem is they can't because EPA has denied um, the waiver necessary to, to achieve this because it would only require um, mandating fuel efficiency standards for cars. And uh, I don't know if really states ought to be involved in mandating fuel efficiency. Actually, I do know, and the answer is no. States should not be involved in mandating uh, fuel efficiency um, for cars. The, the second part of this trend, as I call trend 2A, is to say, okay, maybe, you know, transportation, that's 27% of all greenhouse gas emissions. We're going to focus on, there's two different prongs. One is to focus on the, on the automobile and say, this needs to be more energy efficient. And then the other one is, well, what about the fuel that goes into the, to the automobile? How can we have this less carbon intensive, the fuel? And so California came up with low carbon fuel standard. What, uh, what that is, is to reduce the, quote, life cycle carbon intensity of fuels by 10% by 2020. Now, what is this? Originally, what I think California was, what was considering is, hey, there's stuff called biofuel, like ethanol. That is great stuff. And in fact, what is so great about it is there's less carbon intensity um, in growing it because you know the plants take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Yes, it burns it and goes back to the atmosphere, but that was stuff that was there already. There, this is less carbon intense than gasoline. Uh, I think that was their original plan, and, and in that sense, it, you know, it, when, when that's your thinking, 
that makes a lot of sense. The problem is, is if you've been following this, all of the, the recent studies have been showing, in, in fact, two studies that were in science, shows that, oh my goodness, when you consider everything about biofuel, biofuel is, is actually more carbon intensive. It actually releases more carbon dioxide than petroleum. So California has a little bit of a problem because how in the world they're going to come up with a low carbon fuel standard when probably the preferred method doesn't necessarily make sense anymore is, is anyone's guess. Um, and here, here are states that are considering the ones that are kind of in the light. I guess it does look like green on your screen. Um, with uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Illinois, Connecticut, and Massachusetts all would like, are all now considering low carbon fuel standards, you know, putting aside the issue completely of what in the world that means and how in the world did you get there. It's magic technology. So the third trend is renewable portfolio standards in the states. What these are is mandating that a certain percentage of your energy comes from uh, renewable, renewable sources. Not, not energy, I mean electricity. And uh, again, this is from Pew, and that's why it's not prettier. Um, the, uh, I, I included this, and it's really busy, but the business just makes my point that there are a lot of states out there that have these uh, renewable portfolio standards. Um, and California's is 20% by 2010. Um, again, Cal um, Oregon's saying, hey, we're going to one-up you by 25% by, 20, by 2025. Um, we, will, we will see if uh, how in the world renewable, um, what in the world happens in the re renewable electricity market to allow this to actually happen without completely murdering customers which is what's going to happen. And, and this is a very active area. All the green states passed some type of renew something related to renewable portfolio standards in the 2007 legislative session. Uh, mo what many of these are is, first of all, you pass a renewable portfolio standard that's low. And then you say, oh, well, why don't we just increase it a couple percentage points? Why not? Honestly, why not? Because, I mean, are you, if you're not, if, if you meet the first, uh, you're probably not going to meet the first one, so why don't you just pretend and say you're going to meet the other ones as well? So what are, what are going to be the future, the future trends in this area? Um, and one of the things that, that Sandy uh, talked about, she talked about REGI in the Northeast, the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, and there's going to be some more of these uh, in other parts of the country. The, reg the Regional Greenhouse Gas um, Initiative is rather kind of a kind of strong, as in they're, they're really going down this path. The Western Climate Initiative, on the other hand, is a very different animal because California's there, um, Washington and Oregon, but Utah's governor has signed them up for the Western Climate Initiative, but Utah's legislatures are not going to go along. <laughs> um, and that's, that's, that's a good question, what's going to happen with Arizona, New Mexico, same, yeah, same, same type of situation. So we have these, you know, when you see graphs of, oh, all these states have, have joined these, these climate initiatives, okay, sure. But the question really is where the rubber meets the road. What are the regulations going to be, and how are they going to be implemented? Because that's, uh, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. And we're going, to see, we're going to see more of this, and we're going to see these kind of, these, the results of this come to, to fruition. Uh, the second trend is Kansas. Um, Kansas last year, the, the, uh, the, the governor denied a permit to build a coal-fired power plant, not because they had done anything wrong, but what they decided was, oh my goodness, carbon dioxide is emitted by coal-fired power plants. Okay, true. And so they denied the permit. And uh, as a result, there was a bill that was introduced this year in the uh, Kansas legislature that was uh, draconian, I believe, um, that included a carbon tax to try to appease the, the governor and allow them to go forward and to build more power plants because, hey, energy is a good thing. Um, lastly, I had something else, and I can't remember what it is, which is why I wrote it down. And that is that the, uh, the one last thing that we'll see is, and hopefully you guys will get to hear Paul Chester later today talk about the Center for Climate Strategies and what they're doing, is that as more of the states that I, that I talked about here and others come up with their climate action plans. 
the question is going to be implementation of those plans, as in implementation in state legislatures um, and watching when, uh, because what's, what's happening is there's a lot of groups talking about this is what we need to do, X, Y, Z, P, D, Q, and then the question is, okay, what's, how does that get translated into law? Thank you very much for your time.